The U.S. is facing a growing number of threats here domestically. Among the top challenges the Department of Homeland Security faces include securing the border as well as rising concerns about attacks from domestic extremists on the U.S. energy grid. CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga joins us now with more. So, Nicole, let's discuss this conversation that you just had. You asked the Department of Homeland Security Intel Chief Kenneth Weinstein about efforts to attack power stations across the country. Let's play some of your exchange with him. There are currently dozens of open FBI investigations across the country related to our power grid and electricity infrastructure. Is this a coordinated effort to turn off the lights? Some of them are for perfectly criminal, you know, purely criminal reasons, such as uh, one, um, one perpetrator who, was, who shot at a substation because he wanted to turn the, energy, the electricity off so he could rob an ATM machine. Um, but some of them are also, some of these shootings are also being done by domestic violent extremists who have this vision in mind. And the vision, in short, is that they want to take down the energy grid. And if they take down the energy grid, they believe that society will then collapse. And then out of the collapsed society will rise a white nationalist government to replace the current government. Nicole, it's disturbing to hear that. What was your mm. takeaway from that? Yeah, Elaine, two big takeaways. The first is that the intelligence chief did not rule out insider threats and specifically went on to say that they're looking at all of the possibilities, whether it be, you know, suspects on the outside driven by ideological reasons to target uh, electric infrastructure across the country or perhaps someone on the inside, a former, you know, employee who might have a bone to pick with an energy company. Uh, you know, we still don't know who was behind uh, that power grid attack in North Carolina back in December that turned off the lights for, you know, nearly 45,000 people. What we do know is that taking out those two facilities down there, uh, you know, required uh, some sort of intimate knowledge of how, you know, the power grid works. And so not ruling out that possibility, the Intel chief also going on to say that they are very concerned about potential copycat attacks, particularly among those domestic violent extremists you heard him mention who are driven by white nationalist ideology and conspiracy theories. Very eye-opening responses, Nicole, you're getting from him. Viewers really should listen to, um, you know, your reporting here. You also asked the DHS Intel chief about fentanyl coming across the southern border. We've heard about this being such an issue for so many. Let's quickly play for our viewers that exchange. The DEA seized more than 50 million pills and 10,000 pounds of fentanyl in fiscal year 2022. How did enough fentanyl to kill every American make it into the United States last year? Fentanyl is a scourge that we are intensely focused on at, at uh, DHS. Um, we've seen drugs throughout my, my life and over the generations and the impact that illegal drugs can have on people but we've not seen anything of the lethality that we see with fentanyl and with the number of incidents of people unintentionally risking death by taking fentanyl. And it's just absolutely tragic, the number of people, over 100,000 in the space of one year last year, died of overdoses here in the United States. And we are heavily engaged when it comes to trying to stop fentanyl at the border, to take on the cartels that are uh, manufacturing and marketing and distributing fentanyl throughout the United States. Nicole, did he give you some detail or further explain what he meant by being, you know, heavily engaged in battling this? Yeah, well, Errol, I think a lot of our viewers would be shocked to hear that the 14,000, more than 14,000 pounds of fentanyl that were seized along the U.S.-Mexico border, of that, more than 84 percent coming through legal ports of entry. And so I went on to mm -hmm. ask the intel chief, you know, why is it that transnational criminal groups are choosing to smuggle these drugs seemingly under the noses of federal law enforcement? He said that, you know, frankly, uh, you know, unlike crop-based drugs, 
fentanyl is extremely potent. It's extremely uh, easy to conceal. More agents are finding it in the frame rails and the stereo systems of these large tractor trailers. He also called the screening process a uh, very laborious, very challenging for these agents. Uh, last thing, Errol, he said it's going to take more than law enforcement to work our way out of this crisis. It's going to take some sort of public education campaign. In fact, he said after he was first briefed on the fentanyl crisis, he called all four of his daughters to warn them of the dangers mm. of this drug. That tells you a lot. It does. You know? It really does. And I think there's a lot of other people still learning about just how lethal fentanyl is. Our CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter, Nicole Skanga, uh, we appreciate your reporting. Thanks for joining Thank us you. from Thanks, Washington. Nicole.